Hi, Jason Beatty here for Indigo Prep Feed Blog, episode number two. Today I'm answering a question I've been asked I don't know how many times. How do I get a 700 on the GMAT? How many questions do I have to get right? I've got two answers for you here. I've got a short answer, and then I've got a long answer. So let's get into it. The short answer is that you need to get about 23 questions right on each section, about 23 right on math, about 23 right on verbal, and that usually balances out to around a 700. So react to that number for me. Is that a lot? Is that a little? Is that more than you expected? Is that less than you expected? For most people, it's a lot less than you expected. So let's tell you why in the long answer. The long answer is the GMAT uses a testing paradigm known as item response theory. You can go down a Wikipedia rabbit hole if you like on this, and it's somewhat interesting. It's different from something called classical testing theory. The uh, IRT has a number of different types. Uh, the GMAT type of IRT has three truths that you should absolutely know. Number one, it gives you a harder question when you get a question right. Number two, it gives you an easier question when you get a question wrong. And there is a massive penalty for not answering questions. So, the G uh, all IRTs are somewhat unique. The GMAT instance has these particular uh, truths. It's true for the GMAT specifically and for IRT overall that most of your score movement takes place in the first half of the test. And for most test takers, the second half of the test is at your aptitude. So once you get to a particular level, you start, by the way, at a 50th percentile, and it takes about half the test to find a level. And from that point on, about halfway through the test, you're getting half the questions right and half the questions wrong. So when you are at aptitude, it's important to know, and the GMAT, by the way, this is at their definition, they define your aptitude at the level where you're getting half the questions wrong, or said a different way, half the questions right. So no matter who you are, if you're a 300 test taker, if you're an 800 test taker, the last half of the test is usually getting half the questions wrong just how the algorithm, the IRT for the GMAT works. So how that might look for a 700 is the first half of the test, you're going to move yourself up from your starting point, which is the 50th percentile, by getting a preponderance of the questions correct. Once you reach reached halfway and you're at your level, you're going to get about half the questions right and about half the questions wrong. So if you add up the right from the first half, and the right from the second half, you get the total of 23. Same thing approximately happens on the verbal, 13, 10, and 23. Now, one reaction I don't want you to have here uh, is that you should spend a lot of time on the first half of the test. It turns out that the questions are approximately equally weighted, and this is theoretically what happens. For a number of reasons that are a little bit too detailed to go in here, this is not actually what happens, but theoretically, this is how you can think of it. Now, of course, this is one way to a 700. There are all sorts of ways that you could possibly reach a 700. Uh, one particular time, I forced myself to miss more than half the quant questions. So I think I got uh, something like 17 and 20 here, quant, right or wrong. I killed the verbal. I think I got 30 uh, and 11. And this resor resorted in a 720. So there are tons of paths to 700, but the approximate path or the average path is about 23 right on each side. That isn't to say that you couldn't do poorly on one side and great on the other and still end up with a 720. Here is uh, an interesting scoring grid for you to look at. This is from my friends at GMAT. Uh, pill. Uh, and this tells you, you know, well, what if I have a 37? What if I'm getting that on verbal and I'm getting a 40? That means I'm currently at uh, a 640. If my goal score is a 700, how do I get there, right? Well, if I think I can get my quant up to, say, a 45, 
Uh, that means a 700 is here. That means I have to get my quant over to, or I'm sorry, my verbal over to a 41. So spending time with a grid like this can help you build a theory of what your 700 is going to look like. Now, quick caution. Uh, why I borrowed this from GMAT Pill and didn't make my own is that these graphs vary from uh, month to month even, or 16 days to 16 days, each set of questions that they give. Uh, in fact, depressingly, some day, or some sets of 16 days, that's a period in which you can take the GMAT every 16 days, in some of those sets, uh, there are no 800s given. You could get a 51, and a 51, and that would only result in a 780 or a 790. Uh, so it isn't, grids like this are slightly inaccurate. Uh, 45, 41, like shown here, may not be a 700 in every particular cycle, but understanding this grid gives you a sense of where you are, where you need to go, and how you need to get there. Uh, so thank you very much for listening to this. Uh, here are some contact information. If you'd like to talk further about this topic, feel free to hit me up. Otherwise, best of luck on your GMAT studies.